All right. Well, uh, welcome everybody to another OBA Bar Talk virtual chat. I'm Dave Summers, Executive Director of the Omaha Bar Association, here in my home office talking to Susan Rosberg of First National Bank. She's in her home office, which puts mine to shame. Uh, Susan, thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Dave. <laughs> now, um, usually around this time of the year, we'd be talking, hyping up the fall kickoff barbecue hosted at First National Wealth Management. Uh, word did come down late last week that uh, we're going to have to uh, put that on hold for right now because um, First National is not no they're they're being very risk averse, which is which is fine. We understand they're not having parties on premises, no, so no, yeah. uh, we're also working remotely, and that's uh, unfortunate because of COVID that we are unable to host the. 50th this would be the 50th year of barbecue but we will be back next year i'm sure in force you know I, I guess the question becomes um you know do we do we call the next one 51st or the second second 50th um we'll, we'll have to we'll have to think 50, about that 50.2 right? <laughs> uh, so susan you have been a a trust official trust officer um for many decades and you previously were at i believe u.s bank and then union bank and trust um and you've been a longtime oba member and now you're at first national um can you walk us through what you and your office does uh, for individuals looking to looking to to take their assets and, and protect them um in the trust department we have, um, we work in teams with investment professionals, private client advisors, and financial planners, which I don't think is really known throughout the community. They think of trust maybe just isolated in a silo by itself, but we have a full team that we bring in to put the customer at the center of everything we do. And um, I, I guess Omaha is sort of this, again, what's not known is, is how much, how much um, need there is for, for trust and for, you know, these instruments. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty good amount of, of wealth around town uh, yes. spread around that needs protecting, right? Yes, there is. Uh, being the home of Berkshire Hathaway, of course, we have a lot of uh, Berkshire Hathaway holders, and then also since Omaha is the home of several Fortune 500 companies, we have, we work with those executives and their employees on their plans. So there is quite a bit of wealth in Omaha that is going to pass down, uh, as we're seeing now through the next generations. And uh, you know, for those that I guess aren't as familiar with with what happens, um, you know, right now, if I'm a wealthy individual, I'm looking around. I'm seeing COVID um, pandemic happening. I'm seeing potential, uh, you know, need to pass it on sooner than I expected. But uh, I want some control over that, those assets. That's that's what you you all do is is make sure that they they can pass their, their money in the right way or their assets in the right way rather than through the will process and yes. all, all that's, that very uh, messy stuff sometimes, I guess, right? Yes, the, a trust, passing your wealth or having a trust set up is, a uh, trust agreement is essentially a contract that you yourself draw up with the assistance of your estate planning attorney to put in the provisions you desire on how your wealth is going to be transferred on through the next several generations. Uh, First National Bank has uh, a corporate trust department in South Dakota, so we can also serve as trustee for dynasty trusts. And that is something that the ultra high net worth individuals may desire to be able to pass down through successive generations. And, and that's something, this takes me back ooh, to my practicing days long, long ago, um, about 
when you have these, you know, mid-sized uh, family-owned businesses, and you have maybe the person that built it, um, they they have a certain way that they want to they want to continue the business. They want to continue it with the you know their their ideals and their principles, um, and and really they need to work uh, very hard to make that happen in this in this transfer process. It takes many years. Takes takes to you know trust trust officials takes the whole kitchen cabinet of, of professionals to get that done right yes it does and unfortunately a lot of times we see uh, business owners coming into that process really too late and it causes issues with the family dynamics and the business may not carry on as they had originally desired and really that's for lack of planning everybody puts off the planning but working with a good business succession attorney along with the trust department uh, you can really put a plan in place that will carry out all the hard work you put into developing your business absolutely um you know a question i get asked uh from time to time a question my my colleagues get asked a lot is at what point do I have enough assets to you know to to think about um, putting a trust uh, instrument together you know it uh, they're they're looking for a hard number which i I think it the the lawyer answer it depends right it, it depends on um, what you want it depends on who you're you're passing the assets to uh, things like that. Uh, I guess you have the classic case of the the trust fund baby kid that's going to blow all the money and you don't want that to happen. And so, you know, if you just give it to them, they could, they could blow it. If you give it to them in trust, they can only use it for education, things like that. There, there are different, there are different levels of when you should be talking about putting a trust together, right? Probably. It really is a matter of not only there is a, a cost because you're utilizing the services of a corporate trustee and all we have to offer, and then the value we can provide, whether our professional advice, our objectivity, uh, the individual has to, I get decide for themselves if that if the cost is worth it to them. Sure. Uh, I I guess, you know, better safe than sorry, if, if you have a, a decently um, high net in, individual that you're representing in something else, um, it, you'd probably be doing them a disservice by not saying, have you talked to, um, you know, a financial professional about, about potentially using a trust for this, you know, not knowing everything about their, their situation. But uh, if you don't bring it up that they need to have this conversation sooner or later, that's you're probably doing them a disservice not malpractice but you're you're not being the best advisor counselor they could be right yeah yes that yeah. would be our opinion and we're happy to come in at the beginning of a conversation a lot of individuals don't know well what okay you're talking about a trust well what does a trust do who would who would be my trustee they don't know me how would we how would they know what I want. And if we come in on, at the beginning of a conversation with the client, we can help provide the information they need so they could make a informed decision. And then also, if they choose to utilize the bank as a corporate trustee, we've met them, we have their background, we know personally from talking with them what their objectives are and we can help fulfill those absolutely um you know when we're looking at the the size i'm, I'm curious if you have uh, an estimate on how many lawyers as trust officers there are in the omaha metro area i have no idea but i I, I know you, I know some, some formers, I know some, some people that have been doing it for, for decades. Um, how, how big of a community is it out oh, there? Just thinking of the membership in the Omaha State Planning Council, there has to be over 
between 50 and 100 trust wow. officers between probably Omaha and Lincoln generally. That's a pretty good number, yeah. Yes, and we're all very active. Uh, the trust community is small and we all know each other and work very well together if somebody is moving from one corporate fiduciary to another. Is there anything, um, I, right now, government's all out of whack. They're, they're throwing together laws on short notice. They're, they're doing big changes. There's obviously been the, the Trump tax changes. Uh, is there anything that's come up recently that, that people need, need to be aware of that sort of changes the calculation on what they've been thinking uh, when it comes to what you do? The most recent thing we've been working with is the CARES Act and how it impacts withdrawals from IRA accounts mm -hmm. and whether an individual needs to take their required minimum distribution this year or the CARES Act allows them to forego it. We'll run some tax projections on that. And then we're also, because this is now 2020, in five years, the federal estate tax is set to sunset and nobody knows what will happen at that time. And we're working on contingent, not contingency, we're working on with individuals planning ahead, what if it does, what will happen then with my estate. And that's, you know, uh... I think there used to be a lot more certainty in what the future looked like when it came to to taxes and things like that. Um, but I I heard yesterday in the news that Joe Biden is proclaiming that he will try to roll back all of the Trump tax cuts um, if elected. Um, you know, the uh, obviously uh, the estate tax is huge and. And right now it's it's gone up to a level that's that's phenomenal for people passing wealth. Um, yeah. So so it's it's been it's been a good run here, uh, but there's talk of potentially uh, lowering that in the future. Um, we'll see. It's always this is a political thing, but it always seems like a tough proposition to say you you made the American dream, you made your millions, now we're gonna tax it. That, that's why I never think it works politically, is it's like you're taxing the American dream, but we'll leave that to the politicians to figure yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you're working from home, but, but work continues. What you're, what you're doing is, is essentially the same, it's just remote, right? It's just remotely. Um, we didn't really miss a beat in switching from the office to working remotely. There is a small staff that goes into the building to handle the mail processing and we're able to go in and in and out quickly and pick up things as we might need, but um, we utilize WebEx so we're able to have uh, client meetings that way. We've hosted a number of investment calls because of mm -hmm. the impact COVID has had on the economy that our customers have been able to dial in and we can share uh, items on the screen for them to look at. Uh, so it's really come together very well. Well, and you know, one, one part of, uh, as I understand it, of the, of the trust situation is how to invest that money um it, reasonably yeah. <laughs> and and that's tough right now uh because up seems to be down left, you know left is right and and so um interest rates falling off a cliff you know uh how, how to make your money earn money uh, above inflation and, and a reasonable rate of return uh that that's no easy task and you really need the right um investment professionals there too yeah. to yeah. keep that nest egg going yeah and that's one thing that has changed considerably since I first started in the business. Uh, in my first years as a trust officer, we had, we had investment professionals we worked with, but none of our clients at the time really asked what their performance return was, how they compared to the S&P 500. 
and now with the technology and the knowledge, everybody can get off the internet and through the news. Every, we have a lot more communication with our customers about their investments and their portfolio and what their asset allocation should be and their risk tolerance than we've ever had before. And now, especially during this, the COVID period, we reached out um, to all of our customers to discuss what was happening with them and set up uh, webinars for them to listen to and they could ask questions. So we would be in constant contact and they would know we're watching over these assets that they've worked hard to preserve and assemble. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I guess it's, it, it's a good problem to have in some respects, right? It, it makes a little bit more work, but at the same time, makes sense. Uh, the more information they have, the more eligible they are, they're pushing uh, to make sure that, that you all are, are uh, keeping their, their interests in, in the best order possible. Yeah. Um, so now, right now, generally speaking, First National, you can go deposit your checks, things like that. But, but really, the thousands of professionals, you all are working remotely, right? Yes. For oh. the most part, a lot of the bank is working remotely. Uh, the branches are open through the drive throughs and you can make appointments to go into the branch to visit with a personal banker if you desire. So we're able to meet uh, all of our customers' needs at this time. Did you ever think that you would be working remotely and, and that we would, you know, when, when did this become a reality that you thought it could even work? It's just, it's kind of mind blowing to me because, you know, looking back 10 years ago, I, I would say, no way, no way we could have even done this, but, but here we are. I mean, you've, yeah. you've seen quite, quite a transition over, over your practice years. Um, amazing, right? Yes. Well, <laughs> the bank was well prepared for this uh, in that we've had times where they've done, run tests of everybody, you know, we're gonna work from home for a period of, for a day and make sure all systems are up and running and going. And that's why we were able to just step right into this. Everybody had their computers at home already with the VPN hookup and uh, all the equipment they needed and really didn't miss a beat. I guess that's where banks are risk averse and they, they think <laughs> out the worst case scenario, right? That's. Should, should have seen that coming, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we have to plan for other disasters. You know, a tornado hits the building. What are you, you know, what are you going to do? How are you going to keep functioning? That right. type of scenario. Yeah. The, the, the First National Bank Tower, uh, you, you work in the tower usually, or when you, when you oh, were at the office, oh, or you're at the Wealth Management out west. I'm at... Uh, business park at 144th and West Dodge. Right, where where the oh. where the barbecue has taken place in the past, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, I, well, I was gonna I was gonna ask about the tower if there's a little bit of sway to it uh, on a, on a windy day up there. I know in Chicago, yeah. the buildings that are much taller, there is sway. I've been in a in a law office at Jenner and Block, and it was like on the 50 something, 60 something floor, and it it was it was swaying on a windy day, but uh, yikes. Anyway. <laughs> um, the tower is uh, 40 stories, but I've never been to the 40th floor, and I'm a little, I'm a little at risk. <laughs> 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 so I, I don't volunteer to go up there to the 40th <laughs> floor. I think the highest I've ever gotten is, is 37 where McGrath North um, uh, offices are. I think it's 37. Yes. And, uh, and Jay Terry, who, uh, Jay Terry McNamara, who founded the, uh, the fall barbecue kick kickoff and um, worked at First National as a trust officer uh, way back in the day. He, he's over there, so that's, um, that's why I get over to that office. And it is, it is quite a view from up there. Actually, if they're in the clouds, 
uh, a lot of times they're above the clouds and can't even <laughs> see what's going on. But um, it, it's 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 so um, it, it's so great to have First National as this fifty year partner with the Omaha Bar Association. I can't understate that. That's amazing to have an event with you know uh, hundreds and hundreds of attorneys and judges at every year. Um, you know, to, to have that long-standing relationship. I know that First National does that with, with so many different professions, industries, um, with, with educational institutions, Creighton and, and you know, uh, UNL and everything like that. So we're not alone in, in saying that we really appreciate uh, the bank for everything that it does for us. And, um, you know, hosting out at the Trust, the Wealth Management um, Building out there has been wonderful. and. We'll uh, we'll we'll do a little homage, I think, um, later later this uh, this summer, early fall, before uh, do a little video um, tribute to to uh, to the forty nine years and to what's to come. So uh, we won't get away from from giving it its due, but uh, we'll be strong next year. And and I, I just want to thank you and the bank for all you do. Thank you. And I still remember my first barbecue kickoff. Um, the, we all got our letters that day that we had passed the bar back that was back when they had to actually mail uh, was the same day as the kickoff so my class we all went to the kickoff in the evening and continued to celebrate passing the bar <laughs> actually becoming attorneys it, it has happened quite and even since i've been in, in this chair it's happened quite a bit that that date is the is the date of the email now um i know it's happened a couple times uh there's been some there's been a, a lot of people that have celebrated and there are a few people that have uh declined their or changed their rsv to to know <laughs> at the last minute so um but just super special Thank you. Thank you for coming on today. Is there anything that I missed? Um, I, I, I've gone through my list of questions. Is there anything that, um, that I missed that you want to chat about? I think just we always try to stress the, to our clients, whether they're just retail clients or uh, commercial clients, the need to go see an estate planning professional and to have a plan in place, not only for at your death, but should you become incapacitated and that truly what a blessing that is to your family to do that. So they are at the last minute wondering what they are supposed to do, um, what is supposed to happen, what did my parent want? Uh, we've seen that happen so many times, but when something is in place, that I also see how smoothly everything can transition and what an ease that peace of mind it gives to the family members. And I really can't stress that enough. Absolutely, it's not about you, it's about the, the family. It's about, yeah. uh, it's, it's, this, it's, this, it's a selfless act, really. Um, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, plenty of plenty of horror stories of not having that certainty, understanding of, of what was supposed to come, what was in the best, you know, their what they wanted, their wishes, and um, yeah. and family strife. And if anybody can yeah. avoid uh, fa family strife and some some amazing, amazingly large court cases uh, com coming out, because there there's been some doozies over the years. Um, yeah, and there's uh, just. One last year, Augustine, uh, that we uh, have came up in a webinar this year. And in that case, the father died in 2010, I think, and it was decided in 2019. So just think nine years uh, that family spent in the courts and disagreements. Um, <laughs> that's that that's the nightmare that's that that gets uh, people in the door right <laughs> don't 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 go through the nightmare absolutely well um thank you 
again and um, and stay safe and have a great Fourth of July. And we'll we'll be chatting here um, later on. I'll try to get you on that interview. Um, uh, I'm going to do some interviews with different people that have been associated with uh, with the barbecue and with First National, and so I think I'll try to get you on for for a little um, short interview that we can splice in there. So uh, I'll be talking to you here soon. Then that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Susan. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Okay.